I love shows like Arcane because on one hand you have swords that literally can cut people in half from 20 feet away to Rubik's Cubes that could destroy the planet and then you have just regular kids like Clagger, Vi, Powder and Milo. And I think there is no story more tragic but also as hilarious as Clagger. Now imagine yourself for a second, you are Clagger, you are just a regular kid from Zorn, you are an orphan, as most people from Zorn are, because people don't live long down in the undercity of Piltover. You know that is an ever present fact in your life. But still, you've managed to find a group of people that you can depend on. You've got Powder, you've got Vi, you've got Myla, and also you've got Vander, who is basically the lead guy of the Undercity. That guy that managed to keep the peace somehow, he is your dad. So you just know that as long as you keep things straight, as long as you don't cause too many problems, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna survive, and that's all you ever could ask for in this world. You just want to survive. Now, one day though, Vi decides, yeah, I've heard of, like this great job that we can do, robbing some guy, like some high society guy. And you think to yourself, well, this can only end bad. So you try and tell Vi, and you're like, Vi, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think we should be going to the surface to rob this guy. Vi just turns to you and says, look, do you think they give a shit if we're going to steal a couple of their trinkets? Yeah, they might be a bit annoyed, but look at them. They've got all the money in the world. We barely have two coins to scrape together. Whatever we get here is worth 10 times what it is to them. And we can actually survive from it. And you think to yourself, yeah, okay, that's fine. I understand. But man, this, this can only end badly. Like, it's going to end badly. It always ends badly whenever we go up to the surface. But you don't want to argue with her because you just know if you even mention that fact to Vi, she will lay you the f*** out. And I mean, it wouldn't even be a close fight because she has a tendency to punch first and then maybe ask some questions at your bleeding corpse. So you just leave her alone and you just follow along because you just think to yourself, well, like, I don't want these guys to get in trouble. And at least if I'm here, I'm capable, I'm dependable, I'm reliable, I'm responsible, and we're gonna be okay. You guys are running around the rooftops of Piltover as you've done a hundred times before. And you come to this building and you jump down onto a balcony and you think, okay, well, maybe this job can't go so badly. So Milo starts picking the lock and you think to yourself, yeah, this is gonna be all right. Next thing you know, Fire just kicks in the door because it's taking too long. You're like, Jesus Christ, Fire, like, that's just going to cause so many problems. Again, you don't say anything because, you know, you've got a job to do. You just have to case the joint. So you run around trying to find stuff that you can steal. Marla starts stuff in the bag with a lot of useless junk, but that's okay because useless junk can still get you some money. Powder goes off and does her own thing, which you don't really worry about because you have your job, which is steal some shit. A few minutes later, you hear a commotion outside and somehow you guys manage to get a chair under the door just in time for the person not to be able to get in. The adrenaline starts pumping and you think to yourself, oh god, well, we're in trouble now, but if we can just get out before this guy bursts in, I think we'll be all right. So you guys jump to the balcony, you can take whatever uh, whatever loot you've managed to steal. You're just about to climb back up onto the roof and you think, okay, nothing bad's happened just yet. We might actually be able to make it out of here. And just as you say that, big blue fucking fire just erupts from the side of the building and you're just like, oh, not again, man. Okay, again, you can't think about it. You just have to run. I mean, you're pretty big for your size, but you're still young and you can still run through the streets of Zorn and you can still outrun some enforcers thinking to yourself, oh, great, so this is this is just how it is again. And you look at Vi, you look at Powder and you look at Milo and they're having fun. And you're just like, man, this is fun to you, getting chased through the streets of Piltover. But it's okay because you still have the loot, although you don't really care much about that. You just want to get down back to the Undercity and then Vi turns a corner and pulls up a thing and she's like, all right, guys, get in. You're thinking to yourself, oh, great, so we're going to be covered in shit again. Milo also mentions that fact, he's like, really, we're going to just get ourselves covered in shit? And he's, we said we wouldn't do this again. And she's like, well, better than getting caught by the enforcers, isn't it? So you guys go down this literal poop chute, get covered in shit all over again, and you end up in your home, the Undercity. You feel a little bit better because obviously the enforcers, they won't come down here because you probably didn't steal anything that bad. So it's just going to go back to normal and everything's going to be great. As you're walking through though, some budget Viego looking guy just walks out in front of you guys and is like, oh, that's a nice little bag you got there. Can I have some of it? You know, you come into my streets making all this drama, like I, I want some stuff. Marlo walks out, walks forward and he's just like, yeah, we got some good stuff, man. And I just turns to him and goes, Milo, what the fuck, bro? Like, why are you trying to get us into a fucking fight? Why are you going to brag that we went up to the top? Don't you remember that time with the burlesque dancer and the wig? Like, is that what you want to happen again? And then Milo turns to Vi and is like, come on, man. That was one time and you're never going to let me live that down forever, are you? The budget Viego guy walks up and he's like, hey, I'm trying to talk to you. And Vi just turns around and says to him, look, man, you, you want some of this treasure? And he's like, yeah. Like, 
give it to me. She just knocks that guy down like a sack of potatoes down a flight of stairs. But you've done some quick math and used one, two, three, four. So there's four guys and there's four of you, but Powder doesn't count because, well, Powder doesn't really do anything. Everything she does falls to shit. So you just know, oh, well, it looks like, looks like I'm going to be the one that's in the 1v2 as per usual and vice starts to fight with the budget viego and you're just wrestling with two guys because you know that's what you do you kind of just have to at this point because you know that's your job you are kind of just the muscle and then in the commotion you're fighting with this guy and you toss him away accidentally of course he sees powder with the with the stuff he kind of gets this wild look in his eye and starts chasing her like, but you can't think about that because the other guy has just swung for you and you need to deal with him and powder's a big girl he's probably not interested in her like that and you, that's the last you see of Powder before you guys get into a big old fight and, you know, you, you take care of business because, you know, because these little losers aren't even going to match up to you guys at all. As you guys are about to leave, the guy pulls a knife and he goes up to Vyra and he's like, I'm going to f***ing cut you. And she just looks at him and his scrawny face and he's just like, man, like, really? And, you know, he just scampers off with his tail between his legs. And so you guys walk off, you manage to get home, and you, you guys are talking to Powder, and she's just like, Oh, I kind of lost the stuff, I was chased by some guy. Oops. Milo's pissed, obviously. Yeah, Vi doesn't care because, you know, Vi's just happy Powder's safe. And you just think to yourself, well, no stuff equals no drama, so <laughs> that's all good. That's all I had to worry about, it's just that there was, now there is literally nothing to tie us to the scene of the crime, and we can go back to our lives as per usual. So you guys sit down, you start nursing your wounds, and, you know, icing yourself, and whatever, and you just, everything is good, everything is fine. Vander comes downstairs, he's like, alright oh, guys, I, there was a commotion up top. You guys have got anything to do with it? Four kids leaving the scene, weren't there? If there's one thing you know about Vanda, he's a bit of an old soul. Oh, he doesn't want any part of any action. He just wants things to be left as they are, just in a state of peace. He just wants the Undercity to be peaceful. Yes, it's going to always have some problems, but he doesn't want any more of it to come to him. But he still has his pride. So when Vi lays down the gauntlet, you almost want to leap out of your seat and get out of there. Which is exactly what happened. You guys go and sit outside. And you, and you wait for them to have their little argument. And you you think to yourself, man, I reckon Vi could probably take Vander in a 1v1. Even though Vander is literally like the, the boss of the Undersea. And Milo goes about eavesdropping. But whatever. You just let Milo do Milo. And you do you. And you just sit there and wait for the whole thing to blow over. Next thing you know, Vander comes out. He's got a look about him that just says, well, it looks like I've got to go deal with some fucking problem. He turns to you and says, all right, Plaga, we, we've got some errors to run. And you're like, oh, okay, well, you know, when there's something on the docket that needs to be done, of course he turns to you. And you don't mind, because at least it beats getting your ass handed to you by Vi, you know? So you follow Vander across the Undercity, you know exactly where you're going, you're going to old Benzo's. But you always looked up to Vander, and even as he's walking you through the streets, he starts asking you some questions. And, but he always treats you like he respects you, like, he treats you like a human being, like an adult. And you've always looked up to him for that, because, you know, most other people, they treat you like a kid. But he turns to you and says, so, Plago, what's all this? And you're like... Some stupid job. A house blew up. I don't know, man. He goes, oh, Milo? So, uh, it's pretty powder, actually. Because, you know, you, powder was the last one to leave the house. Sweetest kid, isn't she? But, you know, she's probably going to be the death of us. And you just chuckle and say, yeah, you're probably right. Just make sure you keep your nose clean and out of trouble, yeah, Clagger? Yeah, you know me. Of course I do. That's why I trust you, don't I? One thing that does bother you, though, is that every time you go to Benzo's, he leaves you to look after the little munchkin echo. Which you don't mind, Echo's a sweet kid, he means, well, he, he's a little sweetheart, really. You know, he's the one that gave you the job in the first place, so you're a little bit bitter because all of this drama kind of came from his intel. But whatever, he explains to you that basically some random guy just came into the Undercity, bought some stuff, and paid double the price. Echo is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah that, and I followed him home, of course. Next thing you know, though, you see two enforcers coming your way, and you're like, oh, God, enforcers down here. So you run for the hills and you run back home and you start talking to Vi and she's just like yeah we pretty should get out of here go somewhere safe so you go to this old arcade thing and Vi thinks oh you yeah, know enforcers they never come down here so you think okay maybe we can just relax here for a little bit just chill while Vi smashes the leaderboard as she always does because we always come down here when Vi wants to blow some steam Milo he's firing his gun and he's missing and Powder just comes over and just bang 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 completely destroys Milo in this little 1v1 and and you're just thinking to yourself, man, she's going to be pretty crazy with a gun when she's older. If she can already do this at this age, why do we even get her to a fistfight? We should just give her a gun and be just done with it. I'm pretty sure she could kill half of Zorn in an instant. You guys are feeling a bit safe, but then there's a commotion outside and you see some enforcers and you just like, oh, f 
fuck's sake, man. I just want to sleep or just chill. I just want to relax, man. And now there's enforcers here as well. What the fuck is this all about? You're dodging bullets, you're throwing punches, and you're trying to avoid getting your face rearranged like a f***ing NPC. And you know, you're trying to find the exit, but every time you turn a corner, just more enforcers just keep on popping up like f***ing bunny rabbits. You guys manage to make a home without issue, but not too long afterwards, the enforcers show up there as well. And you spend the next five minutes playing the most intense game of hide and seek you've ever done in your life. And it just seems that things aren't really getting any better. Actually, it seems that things are just getting progressively worse as the day goes on. And maybe you guys really f***ed up. And you're just kind of realising that now. But just as you think that, the enforcers leave. And things kind of go back to a little bit of normalcy. You know, Vanda goes back to work and you go down with Milo back to the house. And you just chill while Powder and Vi go elsewhere. And you just think to yourself, okay, it's over. Maybe, maybe Vanda has something to do with this. Maybe he talked to the enforcers and now everything is sweet. And you just say, like, okay, thank God. Next thing you know, Vi is kicking down the door and she's looking like she's in a state. And you're just like, oh, good God, what has happened now? And she just goes, okay, guys, I don't know how to tell you this, but Benzo's dead. And you're just like, really? Benzo? He's like Vanda's brother. Like, if anything happened to Benzo, something's going to happen to Vanda. And not two seconds after you think that, and Vanda's been taken. Yeah, some, some, and she's just trying to get out the words of some roided out monster just managed to come through, like, kill the main enforcer, and also pick up Vanda like he was a fucking rag, and just took him somewhere. And you're just like, what the hell? This is, this is not how things are supposed to go. Vanda's supposed to be the one that sorts everything out. He's not, not supposed to be the one that gets taken. But of course, you think to yourself, I, I have to, I have to do this. I have to go, I have to go into the battle. I have to go and save Vanda. Like, he would do the same for me. I'm sure he would. And he would. You and the group, you start getting ready to leave. You know, Powder's looking like she's ready to come up to the plate. And Vi's just like, no, Powder, not this time. It's too dangerous. You're going to cause problems. And just the hurt on Powder's face just is insane. And you just think to yourself, I've never seen Vi talk to Powder like that. But at the same time, you look at Milo and you can see his relief because you know if Powder does go, Powder's probably going to cause problems more than that she's going to solve them. So the three of you, you get up and you leave. And you follow some intel and it leads you to this building on the other side of the city. And you're going there and it's like a factory and you're just like, okay, where is everyone? It's okay, fair enough. And then you see Vanda strapped to a chair and you guys all sprint towards him. You're like, wow, getting to Vanda was pretty easy, wasn't it? This is suspiciously easy. But you think, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe these guys are just idiots. But no, of course not. A group of guys just show up on the other side of the fucking building. And with them is the budget Viego. And you're like, oh, f*** me. Like, Budget Viego's back again. He must have told this guy what was going on. And there must be something else that we're missing here. And this guy, the ringleader, who probably should be wearing an eye patch because that eye is actually nasty. He's like, haha, guys, I got you. I'm going to now kill you all and tell everyone that you ran away because that's my evil plan. You're just like, Jesus Christ, bro, you're just like a cliche of a fing villain or something. Like, this is your plan. You're going to kill us and tell everyone we ran away. Man, this is Zorn. No one gives a like he could just straight up kill us and we, no one would even bat an eye. No one would even care. Why even deal with the pretense, right? But you look at Vi and she's just, she's ready to go. Well, I guess I get ready to go as well. But she turns to you guys, look, man, I got this. You're like, you got this? It's like 20 guys over there. You're going to take down 20 guys? She's like, yeah, I'm going to take down 20 guys. Don't you worry. And so she's like, try and find a way out. One mile, I tries to pick the lock. And so you, you're tapping away and you find a wall that's, kind of hollow and looks like it's bashable and you're thinking okay maybe 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 i can get everyone out maybe i can open up this wall and everything will be great and you're ignoring the commotion of vi literally destroying all of these people she's she's got these gauntlets on she's got old vanda's gauntlets and she is going to town she is making these guys look like school kids and you've never seen anything like it. you 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 knew vi was like strong you knew she was talented as a boxer up there to actively wipe out 20 guys on her own is a whole other realm of impossibility you had no idea about. But you think, oh, thank God we have her because without her, we would be in trouble. You know, and you're hearing Milo with his lock pick and you're like, okay, 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 okay. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. We're going to, we're going to do this. You're going to do this. And you manage to bash away this wall and you're like, yes, yes, yes. And next thing you know, you hear this blood curdling roar and you look back and that budget viego is now purple and 10 feet tall and you're just like oh 
the fucking vibe. She goes to town. She's she's fighting this guy, but she's she quickly realizes she's not a match for him. So she runs back and manages to get the door closed just in time. And you're like, okay, she's got the door closed. I'm nearly through this wall. And Myla's only got one more fucking thing to go through. And you're like, okay, we're, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. So you bash down this wall. You get it free. And you're just like, as Milo takes on those fucking chains. And you can see Vans are rubbing his wrist. There's a smile on his face. Vavai is looking visibly relieved. And you're just like, oh, thank God. But then you just hear, Ching, 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 ching. But you recognize it. It's one of Powder's old toys. And you're like, Powder's here? All of a sudden, just blue fire just erupts from nowhere. And you just see it throw debris at you. And that is it. Everything goes dark, and your thoughts fade into nothing. With the last one being, was that Powder? Anyway, this was... Just a thing that was loosely based off of Mugiwara no Kufi. I think his work is fantastic, and I thought we needed something like this for Arcane. With Arcane Season 2 coming out, I would like to keep doing this if it does well, uh, obviously. Let me know what you think in the comments, and if you liked it, please like and subscribe and everything. Thank you. Have a great day and have a great life.